How was that received internally with the Texans? How was it received outwardly by the fans? People understood it. Uh, the message, the message that uh, Watt gave was very forthright about why he wanted to be released. And uh, Watt was always a great interview. He did so much more for Houston and Southeast Texas than what he did on the field with so many things he did off the field, even before he signed his first contract in 2011 during the lockout, he was going to hospitals doing charity work. And I read a story in the Chronicle about Texans first round pick visiting these kids whose parents had been killed in a car wreck. And I'm thinking, well, maybe he knows the family turned out. He just read the story, went to the hospital to see if there were anything that he could do. And he stayed close to those kids ever since. So uh, what he meant, people understood it. They didn't blame him. They blamed it all on the Texans for being in the predicament they were. In Watt's case, there was some question about, does he have gas left in the tank? Clearly, that was a bad narrative. When you saw him leave Houston, did you think he is on the backside of his career from a numbers of year? Yeah, sure, you can make that argument. But, John, he's been so productive out here this season. That doesn't surprise me at all. Anybody knows anything about football that had watched Watt, it shouldn't surprise them. Number one, last year I saw a great stat on Next Generation Stats in which he was number one in the league at beating triple team blocks, way ahead of his brother TJ. Another one was talking about double teams. And people say, well, his injuries. He hasn't had a serious injury other than a torn pack since uh, like four years ago. And he came back in the playoffs after having that injury repaired. So Watt's a warrior. He plays hard. He doesn't miss games unless he has back surgery. He had back surgery two different times. But all that time he spent out, he spent rehabbing, and that took away a lot of the wear and tear on his body. I used to see him sometime in the dressing room, and his body would be black and blue, mm -hmm. where people would hit him all the way down to his calf muscles. And uh, I'm glad that he's doing well. I'm glad that he's playing for an unbeaten team. And I've known Cliff Kingsbury for a long time. And I'm happy for Cliff because I know there was a lot of people who were saying he should have been fired. John McClain with us for a few minutes. Let's switch gears over to DeAndre Hopkins. Completely different situation from a distance here in Arizona. That trade, revisit that for me and how that went down. He wanted to raise at a time when they were going to extend to Sean Watson and left tech Laramie Tunsil, they didn't want to give it to him. And so people were amazed that they wouldn't get a first-round pick for him. And it had to be somebody willing to redo a contract with three years left. Texans had never redone one with three. They said they weren't going to do it. So they traded him for David Johnson and a second-round pick. Second-round pick, Ross Blacklock, is not starting. Mm -hmm. He's been a disappointment. And David Johnson led them in rushing last year, missed four games because of a concussion. At the pace he was running, he would have been about 1,000 yards, about 1,400 overall. And now he's a backup to Mark Ingram the second, who's their leading rusher. So that trade was a disaster. But you know, people forget here, last season, even though they were 4-12, and Deshaun Watson had the best season of his career without Hopkins. Watson was great in every statistic, but it wasn't his fault. They were 31st in rushing and last against the run and had a terrible defense. So Hop and Watts to be sending the Texans Christmas cards saying, thank you 